I'm going to get to your calls in a minute here. I have with me Dr. Bandy Lee. She is a forensic psychiatrist at uh, Yale School of Medicine, expert on violence prevention for the UN's World Health Organization, editor of The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, and president of the World's World Mental Health Health Coalition. Dr. Lee, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate this. Uh, I want to ask, are you, uh, how do you feel about the bribery that went on there at uh, Yale University? Oh, I think it's awful. Um, all institutions can become corrupt, and apparently Yale is not an exception in spite of the fact that it's a dear alma mater and current institution for me. But I think the problem nowadays is that no institution is immune, mm. that the forces for bribery and corruption are so great that it's incumbent on individuals to speak up and speak out against uh, such corruption of institutions. And without that, I think the inevitable path is toward corruption. Do you trust the leadership of Yale University now uh, once you discover that this was happening? Uh, I know the leadership somewhat, uh, and I do trust them. I, I do trust them more than I do other institutions. But again, it's really incumbent on the members of the university to hold the leaders accountable. I say this because I also have an experience with the American Psychiatric Association. As a psychiatrist, one of the most shocking incidents of my career has been the fact that the American Psychiatric Association, and not many people know about this, has uh, changed its ethical guidelines in order to silence the entire profession and to facilitate the current admi administration. Uh, I can speak more about this if, if you will, but it's really incumbent on individual psychiatrists at this point to speak up against the corruption and abuses of our professional organizations, yeah. uh, which has played a much bigger role, more so than the corruption at Yale University, which is only just one small uh, school, uh, much more so in terms of the current events. Amazing. What exactly does a forensic, forensic psychiatrist do? What do you do every yes. day? Um, yes, not many people know it's it's a specialty within a specialty and that psychi it indicates psychiatrists who work at the interface of psychiatry and the law. So um, we deal with issues that uh, issues of criminal justice, of uh, consulting with courts and legal bodies in order to uh, offer our expertise so that, uh, criminal or civil courses uh, co cases can go through. Uh, I also consult with a number of state governments for prison reform. And these are the kinds of things we do in addition to treating patients and uh, ordinary things that psychiatrists do. My, that's very interesting. My producer uh, discovered that, um, found online that as a teenager, you tutored homeless black children in Harlem, uh, what did you learn about the Blacks as a volunteer? Well, I felt a great affinity to the African-American population, partly because uh, at, at the time of my growing up, there weren't that many Asians. Uh, and um, New York City was almost split in half uh, between Blacks who stayed mostly above 96th Street and whites were mostly below 96th Street. It's almost hard to imagine that now, but there was yeah. a time when that was the case. And Asians, uh, as an Asian, I felt like I could fluidly uh, go between those spaces in a sense because I didn't belong anywhere. I could fit in anywhere. So uh, I know a lot of Asians chose to affiliate with whites. Um, I felt 
you know, that that was rather arbitrary. And um, uh, I have developed a great affinity with uh, with the black American population and actually um, have gone as far as Africa in search of uh, my roots or, or humanity's roots and have spent significant time there also. Uh, what I've learned in general is that the culture is extraordinarily rich. This is a time when there was a lot of violence that was going on. Um, and the kind of self-harm that was happening because the most of the violence was happening actually blacks against blacks yes. and, and uh and and just the tragedy of what human beings can do to one another it's it wasn't so much the immediate violence of blacks against blacks but what society was doing to the african american culture and population that was allowing this to occur. Why are the blacks so violent? Because even today they are still violent. Why, is, why are they? Uh, it's not so much that they are violent, but violence begets violence. Meaning and what? So when, when a population is exposed to a lot of violence, that is mostly structural violence in terms of not having the opportunities, not having the respect, not having the dignity, uh, uh, access to health care, access to jobs. I mean, African Americans live a good decade less than white Americans. And why didn't we see the black violence during the Jim Crow era? During the Jim Crow era, blacks were normal people. They were not violent. They worked. They got married. They had families. Why didn't we see that during those times when times were harder for blacks than they are today? What's well, the difference? because violence is not immediate, especially uh, interpersonal violence is, often has a lag period. And uh, what we're seeing now is, is precisely probably the buildup from, from those eras. Does it uh, have anything to do with the destruction of the fa- I'm sorry, repeat what you're saying? Suicide is often immediate. Homicide is often several years, sometimes decades later. Does it have anything to do with the fact that blacks, most blacks are, are not getting married, they're having their children out of wedlock, and this anger in the home is setting them up to fail in life? Yes, certainly there's a lot of stress, and it can trace back to stress in the community, stress in society. Uh, most interpersonal violence is not just individual. Uh, violence is an ecological phenomenon in that it's mostly, you know, relationships, certainly uh, family, but more so community and probably principally societally, societally, culturally. Uh, there are a lot of influences that play a role in individual violence. Why are blacks so violent toward white people? Why are they blaming the whites for their downfall? Well, that's also kind of a trap one can uh, get caught in because one feels so helpless that you can start uh, laying a lot of blame. But uh, but there's there's some truth to that also. You wrote in, in uh, 2017, you were the editor of a book called The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. Um, which is a book of essays that were, that examined Trump's mental health. Uh, explain to us what this book is all about. The book came out of a conference that I held. Uh, once Donald Trump was elected, many mental health professionals were deeply concerned because they could see the consequences of his psychology that eventually it would have social, cultural, and political dangers uh, that we're seeing unfold right now. Uh, but at that time, it was merely in his psychology. So we felt that uh, Mr. Trump in the office of the presidency would become very dangerous. And therefore, uh, we had that consensus that was shared among anyone I spoke with, but no one was speaking up about it. 
And so I thought we could perhaps break the silence by holding a conference, mainly on the ethics of speaking up, because we've never encountered such a situation before, at least in our own careers. And how do we respond to our professional responsibility to society? Do we have a duty to warn about a dangerous president? Was was the question we posed, and, and the answer came out, yes. So we decided to put our analyses together in a book, and that's how the book came about. Have you ever examined uh, the president? Uh, none of us have. Uh, some of us have had some personal encounters, but not in a, a psychiatric office setting. Uh, but there is a lot that we can tell outside of an examination, and dangerousness is one of them. Uh, we cannot make a diagnosis, but diagnosis is only one of many things that mental health professionals do. And it's a very specific technical task that requires all the information, including a personal interview. But many other things do not require an interview. Is it unethical for um, uh, professionals to give opinion about someone without examining them? That is what we were disputing at the conference. And I think this really needs to be made clear. You're referring to what is called the Goldwater Rule, yes. which came out of Barry Goldwater's campaign. Um, at that time, out of 12,000 or so psychiatrists who were surveyed, less than 10% came out and spoke irresponsibly. But the magazine that did the survey, of course, made uh, blew it out of proportion and sensationalized it. So the American Psychiatric Association's response was to say that it would be unethical to diagnose a public figure without having examined them and gotten authorization from them. Now, that is only one part of the Goldwater Rule. Here's what the Goldwater Rule really says. It says, uh, a psychiatrist is to contribute to activities that uh, improve the community and better public health. And when you're asked about a public figure, you should educate the public about the pu public figure in general terms, but just do not diagnose. That is the original Goldwater Rule. Now, what the APA did uh, in a public relations campaign since this presidency is what is uh, what is what I uh, have noted earlier that is that is truly shocking and uh, truly unethical in my view to simply uh, silence an entire profession because what they changed since the uh, Trump administration is instead of prohibiting just diagnosis which many of us are fine with. We don't have to, to diagnose a public figure to state that he's dangerous, that he needs an evaluation, that the public needs to be aware. But what they did was they said that any comment of any kind of a public figure, not just diagnosis, was not allowed. And this, of course, there were dozens of psychiatrists speaking up, if not hundreds, at the beginning of this administration, now there are none. So they have essentially succeeded in uh, blocking us from speaking about this towering issue of our time, because no matter where it's occurring, no matter how people try to interpret this in political terms, the origin is psychological and it needed to be dealt with in a mental health manner and needed to be dealt with soon. This Amazing. is what they have blocked. Amazing. Are you a Republican? I am actually of neither party. In fact, before this administration, I was not even in, that interested in American politics. I was involved in global health. I was traveling around the world, preventing, helping to prevent violence, advising governments, and uh, setting up violence prevention programs. So my concern was uh, preventing genocide, uh, gender-based violence, uh, civil war. Um, Do you uh, vote? Do you vote? I used to just vote on presidential years. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> uh, embarrassed to say. <laughs> so you did not vote? Uh, did you vote I for the president? Time in the midterms, yes. You vote for the president? 
I did not vote for the president. I, I mean, the symptoms were obvious to me since the start. Also, I'm a New Yorker, so I've heard about a lot of his uh, unlawful deeds before his campaign. Did you vote for Hillary? I did vote for Hillary. Amazing. And so now that the president has been there for nearly three years, um, it, what has he done to indicate that he has or possibly has mental health issues? Well, he has shown numerous signs from the start, but but as I have said... Like what, for an example? Give me an example. I'm black and I'm slow. Give me an example or something <laughs> that he has done to indicate that he has potential mental health issues. So my main concern was dangerousness, which I have to make clear that violence has very little to do with mental illness. And... Um, uh, more uh, mentally ill individuals are more likely to be victims of violence and perpetrators. And so you really have to look at the, the specific symptoms that make one dangerous. Well, what has to you give me something that the president did to indicate yes. that he has mental issues? Those include impulsivity, like tweeting out policies without consulting anybody. That's an example of impulsivity. He's often But reckless. if he if he didn't tweet out, we wouldn't know the truth because the media lie lie to the people. Otherwise, we wouldn't know the truth. And, and so, is it mental illness to tweet out the truth? Oh, uh, um, it's uh. uh Tweeting out simply what the first thing that comes to one's mind is actually more on the impulsive side. So all no the young people are mentally ill then, right? Because they live on Twitter. Oh, actually, yes. Young people are <laughs> impulsive, but they are naturally impulsive. So are they mentally that's, ill? That's a normal stage of development when, when one is an adolescent, when one is a child or an adolescent. But it is abnormal and a symptom of illness when an adult does it. Amazing. And so... Um, you remember Barack Obama, right? I'm sorry? You remember Barack Obama, the black guy that was the oh, president? Yes, <laughs> when he used Twitter yes. in order to help win the election and lied to the people, did that indicate that Obama was mentally ill as well? Uh, we look at patterns rather than uh, single instances. And so uh, so he didn't show enough of a pattern to raise alarm. How about when he lied uh, after lie after lie about the same thing? Different things? You know, Did that indicate people, all the lies that he told to the people? If you want to, if you like your doctor, you can keep the doctor. Uh, if you uh, like your health insurance, you can keep it, your insurance. He went on Facebook and did a lot of stuff. Did that indicate that Obama was mentally ill? Uh, again, it's about pattern. He may have said, you know, a number of lies, but it didn't rise above the level of normal politician lying, perhaps. So, so, so you look at uh, but what is I'm, I, I, Again, I'm black and I'm slow, but did that indicate that Obama was mentally ill as well? Well, he lied um, after lie after lie after lie. It didn't rise lie. to the level. The pattern was not severe enough for, to raise alarms. Amazing. Uh, in the case of Mr. Trump... Uh, it's noted that he has said 10,000 lies during his presidency. So it's not just a matter of you cannot keep your doctor or you can keep your health insurance, which could have been innocent mistakes, by the way. But uh, Mr. Trump, even after being corrected and after advisors tell him not to promote a conspiracy theory, for example, he still continues on and he doubles down. And that is a sign of pathology at this level. The media lie to the people, especially liberal media, day after day after day. Are they doing that because they are mentally ill, deceiving the people, the Democratic Party, the right of Republicans? Uh, are they are they deceiving the people because they're and I really appreciate you being here. Are they deceiving the people because they are mentally ill? Um, uh, now, the media, uh, what happens is that when you have a uh, a president with mental impairment, it trickles down to the population. In fact, even if uh, members of the population do not have a diagnosable mental disorder, they will take on, for example, delusions and symptoms of mental illness when uh, we have a leader who is... So are you um, saying that the liberal media 
is uh, mentally ill because of President Trump? They show symptoms and signs of illness, but it's actually not an illness. So you what blame happened? President Trump for the mental illness of the liberal media? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. By you said the you said that the liberal media is mentally ill because of President Trump, right? No, no, no. Uh, here's what happens. Uh, this is something that almost every mental health professional experiences. When you have a mentally ill patient and they go untreated and they stay in a family of healthy individuals, it's not the healthy, uh, it's not the mentally ill person who becomes healthy, but rather the healthy members around the mentally ill person who take on symptoms of mental illness. And it's Amazing. almost as if they have a mental illness themselves. And it's, it's a very uh, dramatic phenomenon, uh, and it's called shared psychosis. It's a real condition. So I agree but, with you that the media is mentally ill. I absolutely but agree with the, that. Here's the treatment. When you extract the mentally ill person from the family, the healthy people return to normal. And so you treat the ill person before you re return them to the family, uh, educate the rest of the family and, and have a course of treatment, they will be okay. But without <laughs> intervention, leaving them simply uh, exposed to the pathology, yes. And we're seeing some of that in our population. Much of the population is beguiled by this president. So let me ask, so this is so interesting to me. Mama Mia! But let me ask, yes. over the last three years, more people working now, blacks, women, whites, everybody working. The economy is better. Uh, cut back on taxes. We're safer in our country as a result of President Trump. We uh, uh, are uh, safer. The, uh, uh, the wall going up. Gone well, up. let me let me just finish this. The wall going up as a result of the president. Are those signs of a mentally ill person? The, uh, that type I'm of success. Larger indicators. Uh, recently, a report came out that uh, Americans are the most stressed population in the world. But let me it's just ask that question first. The things I just, you know, I'm just read off or mentioned his successes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, his success is a sign of mentally illness. His, I'm sorry. To be so successful at making the country great again. In the last three years, is that a sign of mentally ill illness? I, I'm not sure what you're referring to as success. He cut back on taxes. More people are working now. Um, we are safer. He cut back on restrictions. He's getting black people out of prison. This is prison. what he's saying. This is what he, he is promoting. But I think the numbers. I know, but let me just finish this. Me. He's getting black people out of prisons. Um, we are safer from the enemy around the world. Um, is that a sign, that type of success, is that a sign of mental illness? I think a lot of the things you're attributing to him are actually decades and, and uh, he's actually, reaping some of the benefits. But when Obama was in there, we were going downhill. Now we're going uphill in a very positive way. The economy was going uphill for eight consecutive years in, in unprecedented ways. Well, somebody need, to tell, somebody need to tell the black people that because they, are, they don't like Obama. They weren't able to work. Violence in uh, Chicago, the black-on-black -black violence got worse. And um, Actually, so blacks don't know Baltimore. During, Baltimore. Uh, let me the, correct you. Let me correct you. Violence rates had improved during Obama's time. Really? They were actually... They were actually stagnant and starting to go up during Bush's era. And then with Obama's election, they went down again. And then there was a slight up curve before Trump's election. And now it's actually dramatically going up. That's again. amazing. So Black Lives Matter chanting killing cops when we want dead cops and when do we want it now? And then blacks went out. Some blacks went out and start killing cops. That was a violence going up. Uh, I mean, uh, toward the end of Obama's um, era, it was going up slightly, but it's it hadn't been going up the way it is now. You know, I wanted to ask you this, and you're an expert on this. Um, 
you now have men taking off their male body parts and attaching women body parts and putting on dresses and acting like women. And you have women taking off women body parts and putting on men body parts and wearing men clothes and acting like men. Is that due to mental illness as well? Um, well, that's that's somewhat a cultural phenomenon, and and there may be some mental illness in some individuals, but but it's more of a cultural phenomenon that may be in in response to uh, previous oppression and and various notions about sexuality. So, is that cultural phenomenon happening due to mental illness? I wouldn't call it a mental illness at this point. But is it, it sane to do into, that to your body, to take off your God-given parts and put on fake parts? The and for pretend- one thing is that our society is not healthy at this point. Yeah. So uh, to respond in certain ways could be a response to that lack of health. Uh, it could be a corrective to the lack of health, or it could be so, a reflection of the lack of health. So I'm saying that one action is not ill or healthy, you know, in a blanket way. We have to look at So it. are you saying that, the great white hope, the president, Trump, are you saying that he's mentally ill for making society better, but the men and women who are taking off their body parts and pretending to be the opposite set are not mentally ill? Transgender is not mental uh, again, illness. I'm not going to comment on people who are who are do, having transgender operations because I have not a- examined them. I have not. But you haven't examined the president either. Uh, as much information as I do on Mr. Trump. So let's just stick with Mr. Trump. But you have uh, not examined the, the great white hope either. How could you make a decision about him? Would you like it if it's, someone again, said... It's about dangerousness, which is not a diagnosis, does not uh, require an examination, and it's actually more accurate from information outside of an examination. And we have voluminous, high-quality information on the president over decades. That's more than enough information. And we recently did a mental health analysis of the Mueller report. And that which, which was, a, Oh, that's a good point. They lied and said the president colluded with Russia, and they screamed and yelled and carried on. They spent thousands of millions of dollars on the so-called investigation. They found out that nothing happened, and they won't admit that they're wrong. They won't apologize. Are they Mueller and others? Are they mentally ill? So uh, my concern is I have not examined any of them and I do not have enough information on any of them. (laughs) Again, I only have enough information about Mr. Trump. Amazing. But why are you you a uh, a, a forensic psychiatrist? Why why haven't you examined those people? They were very public. They have been yelling and screaming for three years. They've been proven to be liars. Why haven't you noticed them? Um, Because my interest is on the effect of the president on society, which is currently a a mental health crisis and a national emergency. And uh, the Mueller report has confirmed a lot of our assessments to the point where we can almost come to a conclusion. We have requested that the president submit to a personal evaluation. Amazing. If he believes he is fit, he should submit to one. Why should he he prove that to anyone? Why should he have to prove his health or not health issues to anyone? People don't go around proving. He has shown enough signs of pathology for uh, for thousands of mental health professionals to be concerned and we have been requesting a mental health exam he has avoided it through fake exams did obama go through a mental health examination we are now asking that all presidential and vice presidential candidates undergo a did you ask that exam. of barack obama we're we're asking of all upcoming Presidents and vice presidents. But again, I'm black and I'm slow. Did you ask that of? I need a yes or no. Did you ask that of Barack Obama? No, it was never. Cons- 
concern before Mr. Trump. We've never had such a mentally unstable, unstable president in most of our memory. And therefore, he has raised that is perhaps one contribution he has made in that he has raised the importance of mental stability and acuity in an important office such as the president's. And and we are requiring that from now on of everybody. Uh, we're asking that they submit voluntarily. But, I, but it's not it true be- that it wasn't asked before because they asked that of another Republican president who lost as a result of that. We just talked about him. What was his name again? Goldberg? Goldwater? We asked that of Goldwater. Uh, you guys asked that of Goldwater. Yes, uh, so it has been asked of another. Asked well, why was it? It, it was asked of Goldwater. Please. It would have been good if they had asked for one because I believe that he would have passed. Who, Obama? Obama, I think he would have passed. <laughs> Mr. Trump, I, I sincerely doubt he would be able to, and that's why he's avoiding one. As a forensic psychiatrist who, uh, at Yale University, there are women who are killing their children inside of their wombs. And there are men and women who support it. Again, these are and the then, kinds of and, and then they are now. Let me just the finish. The, let me finish the question. Let me just finish this. I know, but let me ask this. And now they are saying that once the baby pops out of the womb after the ninth month, that you can now kill the baby. Don't let the baby live. Is that I due to? That's untrue. Is that due to? Uh, I believe that's untrue. No, they just passed that law in New York. Skeptical. That path in New York. I my question to you, my question to you, is that mental illness to kill unborn children? Is that mental illness? It could be. It may not be. So these women may but be I mentally that ill that for. Fact itself is untrue. But so these women may be mentally ill for killing their children inside of their wombs by way of abortion. I am concerned about. Um, Perhaps you're you're listening to Mr. Trump's rhetoric more than listening to the facts and evidence. No, I'm asking you about these. Facts, I, I want to come back to that. I definitely want to come back to that. But my question is, because you're a mental health expert, um, these women who are killing the children in their wombs, and some of these children can now pop out in the ninth month and let the baby die. Even Obama wanted the baby to die on the medical table without doing a botched abortion. Uh, without any medical care. Is that due to mental illness that they're willing to kill children in the womb? And even after the baby is born, is that due to mental illness? I just need it. I'm black. I'm slow. And I need an answer to that. You're an expert. Is that due to mental illness? I'm slow, but I think you have a mistaken notion of mental illness. That's why I'm asking you. Is that due? It's something that cannot be answered in a yes or no. It requires an examination in this case because there's not enough public data. How much do you need? uh, Again, I would like to stick stick with Mr. Trump, which is, I believe, the reason you're interviewing me for. Okay, concerning the president, so you won't answer that, but concerning the president, uh, this woman, Maxine Waters, out of California, a Democrat, she not only won impeachment, but she called for the violence of Trump supporters when they when you run into them in a cafe or something like that, and she we call I call her the wicked witch of the West with the low IQ. Is she calling for violence and hate this man so much, the Great White Hope so much, because of mental illness? Is Maxine Waters mentally ill as well? Again, I don't have enough information on on Miss Waters. Uh, Congresswoman Waters, I uh, would like to stick with Mr. Trump, please. So you have never personally examined the great white hope, President Donald Trump, and you have a mental illness mentality about him when you have the crazy people out there dressing like women and dressing like men and saying encouraging They're violence. They're not a danger to society in the way that Mr. Trump is. I'm sorry? They're not a danger to society the way that Mr. Trump is. But the Mr. president Trump is currently a danger to our nation and to international security, and that is why we're calling for an examination. If he feels that he is fit for the presidency, he should be able to submit to an examination and pass it. But currently, what we do not believe that he has the capacity to pass a basic 
mental capacity exam. Why, That's our assessment. In closing, why would a man like the great white hope, President Trump, submit to a bunch of people who don't like him because he's a white male, straight, conservative, white male? Uh, let me just ask. Let me just finish. Let me just finish this. He's a straight, white, conservative, Christian male of power and making the country great again. When you got a bunch of liberal intellectuals who don't like him, why would he submit to his enemies? Again, it's not about like or dislike. We are medical professionals. We are concerned. We're actually pro-human. So you can say that we're pro-Mr. Trump. Uh, we would like him to receive the proper care. Currently, uh, the power that he has given, the access to war-making powers and the nuclear arsenal that, uh, that he has is not a healthy situation. It's a dangerous situation. Amazing! And as professionals, we, we make our assessments based on evidence, Clinical observations, we back our assertions with data alone, not personal opinion, not political affiliation, not Were you, ideas. My final question, were you born in America? I was, uh, I came here when I was a year old. I consider myself thoroughly American, a patriot, I am Christian, and I am... You a Christian? Uh, yes, I am. And you support... A one, too. And you support... Uh, transgender and abortion and all that. How can you be a Christian and support evil? I'm mainly concerned about our nation's safety and public health as well as public mental health. But you're not I concerned about, you you're not concerned as a Christian, you're not concerned about the soul of people who are destroying themselves by thinking that they're a man when they're a woman or a woman when they're a man. Of course I am. And how about those, the unborn those children? Are real concerns. Those are relatively small concerns compared to the much larger concern about human society and human civilization that is at stake. Amazing. The mental instability of the most powerful man. But 60 Earth. million. And that is my principal and overriding concern. Since 19... I'll tell you that I, I am currently in a 40-day fast. Um, I'm about 10 days into it, and I'm praying for the safety of our nation. Uh, uh, since 1973, 60 million babies have been killed inside the womb, and you're not concerned about that as a Christian? I'm actually concerned about people who die every single day, who deaths could be prevented. How about the unborn? We should be pro all of life. How about the unborn? Unborn, uh, not just unborn, partial human beings. Um, we should be concerned about our fellow human beings all across the board, all around the world, who are all in danger. So, Doctor, uh, the Skype messed up. But let me ask: Is it unhealthy for the un children who are being killed inside the womb? Isn't that unhealthy for the baby that's being killed inside the, the woman's womb? Of course, but it's also an unhealthy fixation when we are waging wars. Did you know that we're waging war in about 80 countries around the world? But Obama did that. Oh, I, I mean, this, is, this goes across multiple presidencies. Okay. Dr. I'm Th Catholic, so I, I should be concerned about unborn babies. Yeah, But it's you a small concern over the numerous deaths that we are propagating. Uh, that, that we are waging. But and just so you know, you might not be aware. Wage. You might not be aware of this, but Obama started all those wars. The Great White Hope is ending those wars. He's working on ending them. But it was Obama. Uh, so y'all need to examine. Y'all need to examine Obama. Do you know what the nuclear posture review is? No. It's a first strike nuclear war policy. Uh, Mr. Trump instituted it. He withdrew from the INF Treaty. He withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal. He is uh, destabilizing the Middle East. Let, He's let me just say, amazing. Let me just say this. I have two other quick questions. Number one, you say you're Catholic. What do you think about the liberal pope? I don't consider him liberal or conservative. I consider him uh, abiding by the gospel. Do you love Israel? Uh, 
Do you think Jesus was liberal? No. Uh uh-uh, uh, you about to make me cuss. No, he wasn't liberal. <laughs> Do you? You think Jesus um, wasn't liberal? Because you seem to be using the word liberal for uh for people who are uh trying to be ethical or truthful. But liberals so are not when ethical. You say liberal media, how it lies. Uh, I actually find the, the, the extreme white wing media to be very concerningly spreading conspiracy theories. But and the pope, the pope is um, pope, liberals are not ethical. That's why we have such a messed up world because the conservatives. How do you know liberals are not ethical. Have you have you examined all of them yourself? Because I've never seen a liberal that stood up for anything that's right. And that's good. So that's why. So if you make such blanket generalizations, then you have to be concerned about being influenced by propaganda or. Um, oh, by God. I'm being influenced by God. Does that count? Uh, yes, but why is it going into uh, politics? My last question for you Do you love Israel? I love Israel as a land, and I love Israelis as people. You love the Jews? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I, uh, I've actually been to Israel, and, and I found them incredibly humane and a good people, just as Americans are, but misled by corruption of politics. Yeah, there's a woman in, uh, in Congress, and then we're done. There's a woman in Congress. Her name is Ilhan Omar. She hate America. She hate the Christians. And she hate the Jews. Should she be in our government? That's a political question, uh, I think, again, loaded with prejudice that I, I cannot answer. Okay. Dr. Bandy Lee, thank you so much for coming on. That was fun. Okay. Thank you for having me. Will you come back again? Sure. I enjoy talking to you. Thank you so much. All right? Okay. All right. Now. All right, folks. We're having some problems there with the Skype uh, connection, so that's why... I, you can hear it clearly as a minute, as a, I mean, for a little, at the end there. Um, I appreciate the doctor hanging in there, too. She's better than some liberal men.